Good morning, my brothers and sisters. On behalf of our rector, Reverend Father Romack, I want to welcome you to this homegoing celebration service for Miss Cynthia Malcolm. I know it's a very difficult time for many of you, so I'm going to try to make it as smooth as possible as, we, as I invite you up to come up and give some tributes. On behalf of the rector, warden, and vestry, and the parishioners, I would like to extend a deep sympathy and condolences to the Stevenson's family, especially Mr. Stevenson, Michelle, Anthony, and all those who are near and dear to Miss Cynthia Malcolm Stevenson. At this time, I would like to open the floors for tributes. As you know, our time is going to be limited this morning because we have to start the formal celebration exactly 10 a.m. So I'm going to invite those of you who would like to come up and share some of your fondest memories to come forward. There's no particular order this morning, so the floor is going to be open. You're limited to two to three minutes, okay? So we have Dr. Castro first, come on up. Thank you, Armin. Um, so I'm Evelyn Castro, and I've known Mrs. Malcolm, Ms. Stevenson, for more than 25 years. And I'm bringing condolences to her husband, to her children, Michelle and Anthony, to the grandsons and the brothers and sisters. Um, being a member of this church, it's not just, oh, this is her church she passed by. She was a pillar, a pillar of this church. All right, always active, always doing things, always setting a standard. And so we had the pleasure of having Michelle as she grew up, a scholar and a scholarship winner from this church, brilliant, as well as the, as the two grandsons. We're very, very proud of them. But it's a natural thing. It's a natural because Mrs. Malcolm, for many of us, she set the standard. When it was time for her to retire, she said, don't worry, Michelle will take care of it. As I pulled up to the church today, I knew this would be a special homegoing service. She was a woman that we all looked up to because of her persistence. She did not stop. If you read the biography, you could see how she pursued nursing, helping people, and it was nursing at a high standard. She went from school to school till she completed all of her studies and passed all her bars. When I leave here today, I'm a vice president at, in CUNY at Meg Rivers College. I'll be meeting with 40 student nurses. And one of the things I wanted to do was to have them meet her. Because if she was in charge of something, it was going to be well done or not done at all. So God bless her. May she rest in peace. We loved her here at St. Augustine's, and we'll be here for Mr. Stevenson. Uh, all the work that she's done and all the work that they've done, traveling the world on many, many trips with Ormond and other people, uh, we just will never forget her. Her spirit lives on in her children and her grandchildren, and it lives on in this church. God bless you, Mrs. Malcolm Stevenson. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Castro. Next, don't be shy, come on down. I know many of you have some fond memories of Miss Cynthia, including myself, which I'll share a little later. Good morning. My name is Sandra. I know Miss Malcolm for 21 years. I moved right beside her. And wow, she was a lady. Meeting Miss Malcolm, the, the, the verse in the Bible that says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. 
become meaning to me because it's when I met her that Bible verse have meaning to me. I used to always cook and feed Miss Malcolm and she always say, your hands are so sweet, God bless you. And I said, Miss Malcolm, if I don't take care of you, how can I take care of myself? She always said, God bless you. And when she met my boys, <laughs> They were so young, and she said, who are you, little lad? And they say, oh, it's me, Christian and Kadeem. And she said, well, my name is Cynthia Malcolm. And that resonated in my boys them forever, that we always laugh and talk about it. She has such a rambustious laugh that you sit in the house, and when she on her the porch talking to somebody, and she laughs, she say, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and we just in the house, and we laugh, because she laughs so funny. <laughs> she was such an awesome lady, and it is so important that when a message resonates on your heart, to pick the phone up and say hello to somebody, or go and visit somebody, we should, because we never know if that's the last time that we're going to see that person or put a smile on their face. And the Sunday, when I went and see Miss Malcolm, I came from church, and I stand at my front door, and a voice just said, go visit her. You haven't seen her in a while. It's the winter. She's home. And I rang the bell, and I rang, and I rang, and nobody answered. And Mr. Stevenson answered. I said, where's Miss Malcolm? She's sleeping. She's upstairs? He said, yes, yeah, she's upstairs. And I didn't wait for an invite in. I just went in, and I went upstairs. And we talked, and she laughed, and she said, I wasn't feeling so good. I came down with a cold, you know, but I'm fighting it. And I said, hold on to that everlasting arms of God. And she said, yes, I will. Yes, I will. And who knows that we would have been here today saying goodbye. So Miss Malcolm, I love you. You will always be remembered. I miss you. And you will always be Cynthia Malcolm to me. I love you. Bye. Come on down. Who's next? These are the kind of memories that make the grieving process much easier for the bereaved. So we thank you for sharing. Come on down. Good morning. My name is Aretha Wint McDonald. Permit me to say Cynthia, because we have been friends for the past 50 years. We studied together in Jamaica. We came here. We raised our children together. We worked together. We fought many battles, foreign and domestic. But we have never broken ties. A woman of grace, but full of courage and stamina, and I'm going, and nothing will stop me. Just a week before she passed, of course, we would speak like, I would just say maybe every two to three weeks. And the last conversation we had, we spoke for about an hour. We talked about the children, we talked about the marriage. We talked about every, just about everything. But that's how we do it. And we knew each other's voice. If something was wrong, the moment she say, Arita, I know, I would say, Cynthia, what is it now? Same thing with her. The moment I open my mouth, she knows whether I'm in a jovial mood or something is wrong. Her greatest pride and joy, her children. Of course, Mrs. Stevenson came right in there. But the children, the children, the children. And I won't say too much this morning. All I say to the children and grandchildren, hold on, my child. Joy comes in the morning. Weeping only lasts for a night. Hold on, my children. Joy comes in the morning. 
the darkest hour means light is just inside. Aunt Arita will always be here. We won't break the tie. Trust me, the chain will not be broken. We'll keep the circle together. God bless you. Hello everyone, and good morning. My name is Sunshine, and um, Miss Cynthia took me in in a very difficult time in my life. Um, and uh, you know, when I went there, it was crazy because she said, you know, she was living by herself at the time, and she said, you know, I was praying and asking God for some company. And, you know, it was just weird because I was going through something she had to take me in, but she made me feel so welcome, um, you know, by saying just that. And um, she became like a mom to me. Um, she inspired me a lot, you know, so much so that I also became a nurse. Um, she was very encouraging to me. She did not only take me in, but eventually also my husband. And she treated us so well and set us up on a path for success to where, you know, we moved out on our own and, you know, are just doing, you know, doing great. And so um, I just thank God for her, thank God for her life, and I thank God uh, for the path that brought us to her. Um, and, you know, uh, like her neighbor said, she was like low-key a comedian. She would always make us laugh. You know, in any situation, she was able to say a joke or say something to make you feel lighter and better and able to continue on. And um, I remember when I had my baby and we came to visit her, you know, we were still, it was still during COVID and she wouldn't have us, me or my husband, come near, but she uh, invited Bryson over to her and gave him a hug because she just loved, loved kids so much. And um, there's so much more that I could say about her, but I just um, thank God for her life. And uh, she continues to be an inspiration to me. And um, you know, my deepest condolences to the family, and um, I will continue to pray for us all because it's still difficult, you know, no matter the age. So thank you. I think that I'm going to yield, you're, you're going to yield to the brotherhood? Okay, come on. Uh. Good morning, the church. Uh, my name is Harry Johnson. I'm the vice director of the Brotherhood of St. Andrew. And um, I'm saddened to be here this morning of my beloved, who I consider mother, Mrs. Malcolm St um, Stevenson. She was the one that encouraged me to stick with the brotherhood, stick with the church, and always check up on me. I know recently I was going through some stuff, and um, she was constantly calling me and giving me support and guidance. And um, we have two things in common. She's an uh, alumni of New York City College of Technology. And also, she's a former staff of Mount Sinai, Beth Israel, which myself. Miss Malcolm was a very kind person, caring person, thoughtful, and she was a very strong supporter of the Brotherhood. She's always giving her support to her husband, and she will be missed on behalf of the Brotherhood to the family. We extend our condolence. We, will, we miss Mr. Safford. Her condolence, her love and prize be with you. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Kirkney, you threw me off there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Jamaica Bazaar Group and Claudia.
Good morning, church. Uh, on behalf of the Jamaica Bazaar Group, which Ms. Malcolm was an active member, first of all, we'd like to extend our condolences to the family. Michelle is very, very personal to us, and we didn't want to just single her out. And of course, Mr. Stevenson, who we call Mr. Malcolm, because he's also a part of the Jamaica Bazaar Group. I was given the task of reading the tribute from the group, but I have given back the task to the leader of the group, Mrs. Carmen Craig Lawrence. Um, I, apart from the fact that, you know, I have become very close with Michelle because our two boys are the same age, I was a little special to Miss Malcolm, and for those of you who were at the exclusive event, the wedding of the century, you remembered I was the MC. I was very honored and, priv and privileged to be part of such a very special event, and that will remain in my heart. I'm never nervous. <laughs> I MC all the time. Will remain in my heart and my soul forever. Um, before Mrs. Craig Lawrence began the tribute, I just want to say to Michelle, Tai Tai, Anthony, Mr. Malcolm Stevenson, but we call him Mr. Malcolm, um, <laughs> that just remember from me to you, the Lord Jesus Christ comforted Mary and Martha on the death of their brother Lazarus, and I am extremely confident that he will give you the comfort you need in this time. It's not easy because for all of us, it was so sudden, and everybody knows that everybody spoke to her two days ago, a day um, before, an hour before, and all of that, and we all have our stories, and these are the stories that will keep our memories alive of her, and the stories that we will live on and remember Mrs. Malcolm Stevenson, Ms. Craig Lawrence. Good morning. Oh, I miss my turn now. I promise I won't be long. Um, <laughs> this is a sad occasion, and it's also a happy occasion. It is sad that, because we're not going to be seeing her in this life anymore, but um, it's also a happy occasion because we are celebrating her life. My name is Carmen Craig Lawrence, and I'm the leader of the Jamaica Bazaar Group of which Miss Cynthia um, was a member. Um, I got to know her Cynthia over the past 20 plus years. We met when I was a patient at the hospital where she worked, um, which was Beth Israel at the time, now Mount Sinai. She was my nurse there and she treated me with such kindness and compassion I was very touched by the way she cared for me. Then one Sunday morning we met in church and I was very surprised to see her. And I said to my reaction to her was, you worship here too? And she said, yes man. And from that moment we just clicked. As a member of the Jamaican Bazaar group, she was very supportive and committed to the group. If she could not make it to a meeting, all I had to do was bring her up to date with what we discussed, and she was there with everything. Whenever there was the International Bazaar, her favorite dishes for contributions were jerk chicken, escovitch fish, sorrel, ginger beer, and her famous potato pudding. which was always sold off in less than no time. Anyway, she always likes to sit where she can see in a very strategic position, where can she can see what's going on. She wants to make sure that everyone who orders a dish pays for it. <laughs> Cynthia was a very funny lady. She had a great sense of humor. She made me laugh a lot just by the way she talks as someone said earlier. 
When she got back from her last cruise last year, she called me. I said, welcome home, and asked how was the cruise. She said she did not enjoy it as she was so sick. She went from the plane straight to the hospital. She was sounding a bit congested, so when I got off the phone from her, I told my husband I was going out to get some fish, some fish head, of course, to make some soup for her. I made the soup, took it to her, and the next day she called me and told me that the soup was so good, it was making her feel better. So I asked her, does it taste Moorish? And she said, yes, ma'am. So, okay, I said another day, I went and I got some more fish and made her some more soup because she said the soup was getting her feeling better. Mr. Stevenson, Michelle, and the entire family, on behalf of the Jamaican Bazaar Group, we want to wish you our deepest condolences and may her sweet soul rest in peace. Cynthia, you will be dearly missed. Thank you. Okay, we have room for two more. Miss Curtis is next. You want to go, Miss Curtis? And uh, is Sister Jean here? No. 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 Okay. So we're done on the crunch time now, so two minutes, okay? Each. Uh, morning, everyone. Uh, Miss Cynthia was uh, our second mother, so uh, she and my, uh, my mother, uh, Ioni, um, were, were friends for years, but when we would remember itself, right? She always made sure that we were taken care of. We, we've been traveling since um, Ocean Parkway, now to 56th Street and stuff, right? And she's been there for us through the, the, the graduation, the celebrations, the birthday parties, and, and, on, 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 and all the other things, including some of the, the hurts that we, we have gone through, right? And she was a sh rock. She always told us, you know, uh, rest, rest, rest on the Lord, uh, uh, right, right? He will, he will bring you through, right? Her, her faith was, was strong in itself, right? And we, 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 admire, we admire that in, in, in her itself, right? And we appreciate it. And Pete, um, uh, Pete, Michelle, Tyler, and Pete, or, or the son, I just want to say uh, your, your mother was a wonderful, sweet, and loving person. She was, she was tough, but she, she, was, she, was, she was fair. Uh, right? And she, she, always, she always shows love to us. And we just say, uh, uh, we thank you. Uh, we just say, we're going to miss her just like you, 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 you will too, itself, right? Um, and one of the things that, that um, I, I remember most about her is just when my mother uh, suddenly died herself, right? And we came back. She was one of the first persons that came back from Jamaica and we saw us first. And, and she hugged us and you, she just says, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to be out, right? We'll help you pull this through itself, right? You, you uh, rest, on, rest on the Lord again and that will, 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 t will take you. Um, one of the, uh, another th uh, thing that she said when we were, we were, we were getting, um, I was getting married and stuff, right? She came up to me and said, boy, you have a sweet thing there, you know? <laughs> but, but, <it's, laughs> but, but that was, that was, that was a different thing. And we also, oh, good, remember my, my, my brother uh, specified to you, know, uh, we remember distinctly see, when brother remember driving her, driving her to the hospital when Michelle was gonna uh, be born, I said, I'm in labor. And so, so it's just, it's just it, it, it's been there for us, and she's been there for us, and we just say thank you for all, all, all you have done, and thank you for sharing her with, 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 with us. Right? I'll be brief. My name is Tiffany, um, one of Miss Cynthia's neighbors, and that was my dad who just spoke. Um, but I wanted to say something myself because um, I've been uh, an official neighbor of Miss Cynthia's for the last 10 years, but I've known Miss Cynthia, I think, all of my life. And she was definitely one of my grandma's best friends. And 
um, I feel like I've lost my own grandmother. I remember um, the moments when I'd walk home from work and I would look up and I'd see Miss Cynthia waving at me and then I'd see someone else next to her and I realized that was my grandma sitting there with, with Miss Cynthia on the porch. And um, it was just so funny, the two of them, how much they would, they would chit chat because I'd see Miss Cynthia coming home from work. My grandma would go back to the house and then an hour later, see Miss Cynthia calling and I'd be like, they were just talking all day. And then maybe like two hours later, Miss Cynthia would call again. And I'm like, what else have I got to say? Then Miss Cynthia called again an hour later. And it just shows how close the two of them were. Um, and I just really love Miss Cynthia. And everyone mentioned her humor. She was very funny. And um, she meant a lot to me and would give me dating advice sometimes and um, talk to me about her relationship with Mr. Stafford, who she loved and adored. Um, so. I just want to say my condolences to Pete, Michelle, the family, um, and know that I'm here and I support you and I will be over there to have chats with you um, uh, as, as uh, Mr. Stafford as you are there. Um, and I also just wanted to add that I'm really grateful for all the help that Miss Cynthia provided for me when I lost my grandmother. And um, she just really meant a lot to me and would check in on me, make sure I was okay in the neighborhood. And so I'm glad that I was able to give back and share the love and just being her technologist and help her log on to Zoom meetings and help send emails and send things to Michelle when Miss Cynthia wasn't able to. So I'm just really glad that I could give back and just want to say that I love Miss Cynthia and I will miss her. Okay, one more before the obituary. Good morning, everyone. Grace and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. If you're here today without knowing Jesus Christ, it's like driving a car without insurance. Just saying. I am one of the adapted son that none of you know of, uh, from Miss Malcolm. I came here at 14 years old. My name is Emilia Reed, and when I came here, uh, Miss Malcolm House was the first house I've been in. And um, my condolences to Pete, Michelle, Tyler, and her husband, Mrs. Stevenson. Uh, Miss Malcolm loved me so much more than my peers. Uh, she loved me and my father. Uh, she loved me in the sweet potato pudding, uh, the dumplings, and of course, her favorite soup. Uh, I remember when I first got my job at uh, King's Plaza, I didn't have a means of getting there, and I, I talked to Miss Malcolm. We talk about a lot of things, and I asked her, I said, Miss Malcolm, you know, I can't talk to my father. Uh, so, Miss Malcolm, I, I need some way of transportation to get to King's Plaza to work. Uh, sometimes I would come home like 12 o'clock. He said, ah, that Pete have a bite down there, you can't ask him. <laughs> So I take one of the bike, and uh, 12 o'clock at night, I'm riding to work and come back. And my mistake was leaving the bike outside. And I didn't know that there was thief around the area. So they stole the bike, and I felt so bad. I wanted to work extra hard to pay for that bike. And you know, I talked to Pete, and Pete said, ah, don't worry about it, man. Ah, everything good, everything good. And I felt so good because you know, my father used to say, how, how you must rub butter in a post mouth and leave the bike out there? You know what I said? I'm going to teeth it. So I was like, yeah, dad, you know. So Pete make it better for me. Um, and I look back at it now that, um, you know, I met Miss Malcolm also in the hospital and how she took care of those people in the hospital and everything. And I was like, I never want anything to do with hospitals, you know. And it do so happen that I got a job in the hospital uh, also looking out for those people who are sick and everything. But Miss Malcolm has been an inspiration for me. And God bless her, her soul. Rest in peace. Amen. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to invite, oh, Ms. Curtis? Hmm? Oh. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, good morning, all. Let me welcome you again to St. Augustine's. I know you were welcome before. I'm with the Health Girl here and the senior program. I'm also a nurse who have been under the hands of Miss Malcolm on a job, plus on the Health Girl at this church. Miss Malcolm was a no-nonsense person in the field of nursing. 
a no-nonsense person in the field of the health care in St. Augustine's. She makes sure that little grandson of hers, Tyler, was busy, busy, busy doing all the work he can in the church. And Michelle sang in the, Michelle, your choir. And Miss Malcolm kept everybody here in this church. Mr. Stevenson and I met in the 70s. Around the junction when I drove a 1000 Mini Oxford blue car. And that's how long I have known Mr. Stevenson and his family. He was always kind to the children who took the stuff off of his truck. He never had them busted with a cop. He took care of them. So I know Mr. Stevenson since the 1970s. In Jamaica, Dr. Guy sent his condolences, his family, the people at the junction of St. Mary and St. Andrew, they also send their condolences to you, Mr. Stevenson. And those youngsters who you didn't give a hard time to are now doctors, lawyers, and all of the above. And they also want to thank you for your kindness over the years in Jamaica. Thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Curtis. We will now have the obituary by her son, Anthony. Yeah, it's a privilege and an honor to represent uh, this glorious queen. Uh, heaven definitely has an angel in, in its arms, in its midst at, at this very moment. Uh, I'm asking her to keep me strong and let me uh, get through this, uh, this reading. Uh, that was one of her mantras, be strong, be strong. And she always used to roll the mouth for emphasis, be strong. So I'm trying to channel her at this very moment. Uh, it's uh, with heavy hearts that we're here to celebrate this, this angelic figure, at least in my life. Uh, and I'm sure that she was equally so for, for all of us who are here present. Uh, it's been said that uh, the most valuable thing we possess is time, and to whom we allocate a portion of our time represents the people to whom we find endearing enough to so do. Uh, she was endearing, I think, to all of you. This is why you're here. Uh, she touched a great many people in her, in her, in her time. Uh, she was smart, witty. She could whip you with that tongue, boy. She surely could. She only raised her hand to me one time, ever, once. And, and, and the rest of the time, all she had to do was whip that tongue out, and I had to follow, fall in line. She was a sweet woman, a sweet, gentle, kind, strong, black, African woman. She strove from day one, she was grinding. She was grinding from day one because she knew she could depend on no one but herself and God. And she did that to the best of her abilities. And I think uh, we are here evident of the good works that she was able to perpetrate, endure. Uh, Cynthia was uh, born on the 17th of July, 1939, in a small hamlet in uh, western coast of Jamaica. Uh, she grew up in a very strong and close-knit family. Uh, she was a studious child. She worked hard. Uh, through the aid of her uh, uncle, Jay-Z Malcolm, she was able to secure a position in the post office very early in life. But uh, that was not her resting place. She wanted more. And as is her calling, you know, if God puts a uh, a kernel in your mind of what you're expected do, to do, that if you follow through, then uh, it will be made manifest. And I think that's what she did. She followed through. Uh, with the encouragement of her uh, midwife, who Miss uh, McCarthy, who she was aiding at the time, Miss McCarthy encouraged her to, uh, to pursue nursing. And so she did. She left her hamlet. She went to uh, the big city of Kingston on the East Coast. She studied there for a bit, 
moved on to a secondary uh, training program in Manchester before getting her final position in the Jubilee Hospital in, in Port Antonio. Uh, I think that's where she and Ms. McDonald, or maybe even before that, I'm not sure, I don't know the exact history, but I know they've been close for, as she said, some 50 years. That's, that's a long time to know somebody, seriously. A long time. Yeah, 50 years is, is half a decade. That's, that's almost a, 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 a Kingsley ransom of, of memories born between two people. Uh, after uh, she left uh, Port Antonio, she had the vision to come to America. You know, her brother had already migrated, so with his aid, she was able to relocate to New York City. Uh, she wasn't able to continue her, her, her chosen profession. She had to start all over again. And so doing, she was able to secure her papers. She started going to college again, et cetera, et cetera. And finally, she was able to realize her dream fully. She went to uh, New York City Tech, graduated, uh, went to, uh, and then started working at Beth Israel, Kings Highway. And the, the rest of it is listed in detail in the uh, package that you have at your, uh, at your, in your hands. I would urge you to read it because at least it's going to give you a, a greater understanding of the quality individual this, this woman was. She was truly a queen. Uh, she did best with, with what God gave her. Uh, and I, my sister, my son, and uh, my nephew Tyler, her brother Christopher, Jean, Jennifer, and last but not least, her beloved Roy, welcome you here to celebrate this life. Well lived indeed. Cynthia Ivadni Malcolm Stevenson. May you rest in eternal peace. Joining with your mother, your father, your brothers and sisters who have passed before. I'll just ask in the name of God, amen. Thank you, Anthony. At this time, uh, I would like to invite the immediate families to assemble in the back of the church to escort the family, escort the body of Ms. Cynthia into the sanctuary. There's so much more about Cynthia. Uh, you can read along in the program, the service bulletin. But for those of you who are still listening, I would like to give my tribute to Miss Cynthia at this time. It was just a bit over five years that I stood here at this lectern having fun with Miss Cynthia Malcolm as she celebrated her nuptials. You just heard Claudia made note of that, or made mention of that. It was a joyous occasion for all of us. Today is another joyous occasion with a somber undertone. Today, together we celebrate the life of Cynthia Malcolm Stevenson. I personally heard of Cynthia Malcolm Stevenson before I got really to know her. She was just that kind of person. Everyone that came out today may have shared a different experience of Cynthia in one way or another, whether by way of a story, a tongue lashing, or a religious quip. Cynthia was just that person, quiet as a lamb and with a quiet demeanor but it was best to, kept, to keep her that way. I thank God for my experience with Cynthia because it was an amicable one. And yes, once again, I have to share our moments in travel. Both she and Mr. Stevenson loved to travel, more so for Mr. Stevenson. To me, he just loved to get out and enjoy the great outdoors, even when Cynthia wasn't up to it. He would just wander off by himself both of them have had the great fortune of traveling with me to some of the, my annual travel pilgrimages. They especially love the cruises. During the day, they explored the wonderful sights. Many nights on my way to my cabin, I would see them cozying up in the lounge, watching a late show. Sometimes I left them in the casino. Sometimes they're just strolling around like lovebirds. 
I call them the real troopers just enjoying life. But there's also a story. On an Alaska trip the final day, we almost missed church services that had been planned with Bishop Skelton and the people of St. Mark's Episcopal Cathedral in Seattle. We were on the bus waiting for an extended period of time waiting for Cynthia. When she finally showed up, her only excuse was, don't rush me, Galang left me. <laughs> but of course we had to wait. Our last European cruise this past summer was especially taxing on her, but she was determined to travel. Personally, I felt that she would, have, she would not have made it, but she never gave up. I thought of the long flights, the arduous stress that she and her hubby would endure along the way, plus any unforeseen circumstances that might arise. But these occurrences were further from her mind. Through it all, she persevered. And guess what? Deep down inside, I felt that she had in mind that she would be on the next trip. My brothers and sisters, God knew best. He knew that she was tired. He, he said to Cynthia, come get some rest. So on behalf of my family and the members of the Ron Brath Travel Group, I extend uh, condolences to Cynthia. God rest you and may you rest in peace until we meet again. Um, we prepare now for the formal service. Jesus Christ, we repeat all of our sisters in the burial. Let us pray with confidence to God, the giver of life, that the great perfection of the company of the saints. The dear servants, the soft or trapped from all evil, better from every body, that she may rest those saints in eternal habitations, with Father and Holy Spirit to remain one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us also pray for those who mourn, that they may cast the care of God and no confirmation of his power. Almighty God, who could pity upon the sorrow of your servants for whom we pray. Remember them, Lord, in mercy. Nourish them with patience. Come to them with the of your goodness. Lift up your confidence upon them and give them peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though they die. And everyone who has life and all who have committed themselves to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, he will raise me up, and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him, who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us have life in themselves, and none become our own master when we die. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord. And if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Cynthia. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and to love as a companion of our earthly In your boundless compassion, console us to mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth, until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously with the family of Cynthia in their grief, Surround them with your love, that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I read from Job 19, 21 to 27. Job said, have pity on me, have pity on me, O you my friends, for the hand of God has touched me. Why do you, like God, pursue me, never satisfied with my flesh? O oh, that my words were written down, O oh, that they were inscribed in a book, O oh, that with an iron pen and with lead they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall be old and not another. Psalms 123, to you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants looked to the hands of their masters and the eyes of a maid to the hands of their mistress. To our eyes looked to the Lord our, our God until he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy. For we have had many more than enough contempt, too much of the scorn of the indolent rich and the derision of the proud. Revelation chapter 21, two to seven. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, see the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, 
See, I am making all things new. Also he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Word of the Lord. Thank you. All are invited to stand as you are able as we join in the hymn, Hold to God's Unchanging Hand.
Amen. Amen. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. Tom, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
You might have read in the service bulletin uh, my name as the homilist for today. But as I mentioned to my esteemed colleague, a priest of his stature needs an introduction. And as not only Ms. Malcolm's pastor, not only as Ms. Malcolm's priest, but as Ms. Malcolm's friend, I hope that you will receive from him the word of God as we are encouraged to be comforted by the words of our Lord and Savior. Canon Williams, thank you so much. Thank you. The name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> I'm going to ask this gentleman, if you don't mind, if you sit for me because I need to see the family. If you, so you sit, you can come back after. Thank you. First, let me say thank you very much to my esteemed brother, the rector of this church, Father Womack, for his kind welcome and the opportunity to speak at this time. It means a lot to me. <coughs> I want to convey my condolences to Mr. Stevenson. You brought a lot of love and activity into my sister's year, last years. I hope they were good activities. <clears throat> yeah. I remember so well that day when you stood up here shaking like a leaf and she marching up like a queen. <laughs> it was beautiful. And I know that God blessed both of you in these years. My condolences now. And um, <clears throat> to the apples of her eye, I'm not talking about you, Michelle, or you, Pete. <laughs> I'm talking about Brandon and Tyler. Both of you were the apples in your grandmother's eyes. She loved you dearly. Well, she loved both of you too, um, Michelle and, and Pete. <laughs> but those two boys, I remember <clears throat> years ago, how old are you now, Brandon? 23? 22. 22 years ago when I baptized Brandon, and I remember Cynthia saying, we have to put him, we have to put him foot in the cake. <laughs> And your feet, your, one of your feet went into the birthday cake. Of course, you wouldn't know anything. You probably saw pictures, I guess. And then a few years later came Tyler. So it's been a, a journey of love. My condolences to all of you and to other members of the family. What do you say when you come to celebrate a life in the midst of mourning? Because that's what we have to do. We have to mourn, and yet we have to celebrate. Because Cynthia lived a beautiful life. Every opportunity she got, whether, whether it was bus ride or plane ride or ship cruise, Cynthia was there. <clears throat> and we had a good time. I'm going to tell you a few stories about her. You know, I always loved this woman because she was so gentle. She was like a lamb, but not mess with her. <laughs> because you see the other side, she was like a coin, gentle and peaceful on one side. And you listen to her read the lessons from here because she used to read a lot. It was so calm and childlike. But Lord, <laughs> she could stand up for herself. Let's put it that way and leave it there. Jesus, in another few days, we're going to be celebrating um, the command, when Jesus commanded his disciples, <clears throat> sorry, to love one another as he loved us, as Jesus loved us. Love one another as I have loved you, is what Jesus said. Thanks. When emotions get mixed, 
with preaching, you get all kinds of things happening in your throat. Love one another as I have loved you. Oh, sorry, Bishop Alote is here. I need to acknowledge Bishop Alote. I didn't remember. But that was another friend of um, Cynthia, Cynthia Malcolm. Bishop Alote has to go to another service in New Jersey, but he decided he wanted to come here and be with all of you just for a few moments before he leaves. So we acknowledge you, sir, and thank you for being here. Cynthia took those words literally when Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. How do you know that Jesus loves you? And this is not rhetorical. Those who know me that I, I want an answer. How do you know that Jesus loves you? <clears throat> he, because he died for you? Okay, <clears throat> if you don't want to answer now, please think about it. There's a little song that goes, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. That's one way of knowing, but I can tell you that I know the love of Jesus through this woman also. We know the love of God through other people, and Cynthia was one of those persons. I remember another passage of Jesus saying, feed my sheep. This woman could feed his sheep, I tell you. I remember Cynthia used to, every Sunday, when I say every Sunday, I mean literally every Sunday, she prepared a meal for me and my family. And when I say a meal, I'm not talking about a plate of food. I'm talking about a chicken, some oxtail, and like three fish, and three meats at a time with rice and peas while you're in North Carolina not eating anything, Pete. <laughs> I mean, one day I said to her, Cynthia, can you bring less? Because, you know, it's sort of a bit much. So you don't love me food no more. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want no more? So I said, yes, I want. Bring anything you want. Bring as much as you want. <laughs> I mean, that's the kind of person we're talking about. She held nothing back. Whether it was money or food or love, she just gave it. That's who she was. And I hope it continues in, in, in among all of you. Love was the hallmark of her life. I tell you a funny story about Cynthia. I don't think she ever told anybody. I never told people. But now, Cynthia, you can laugh. Cynthia came to church one Sunday morning and she came to the office and I said to her, I looked at her, I said, something is not right. What is it? I said, Cynthia, go into the bathroom and look to see if your wig on right. <laughs> <laughs> and she went in the bathroom and came back out, Lord Jesus, me did have it out back way. <laughs> was just fun. And I want us to remember that about her. She was fun. She just loved life. And nothing could hold her down. i tell you another story. We were on our way back from Ghana. I was just made a canon in 2004. And we were changing planes in Seafall, the, the, the airport in, in um, Amsterdam. We just flew in from, from, from Accra to Amsterdam, and we had a long, long wait over, long, before we got our connecting flight to New York. So a few of us said we were going to, I said, let's go into Amsterdam, because we have a whole day. And Cynthia said, me tired, me now go. I said, all right. So she sat on a bench, and she had one of these carts with her. So I said, okay, since you're not going, I'm going to leave my hand luggage with you. 
I didn't want to lug all of that on the train to Amsterdam. So I put the luggage there, and I turned around to do something, and when I turned back, Cynthia was sleeping. <laughs> <clears throat> so I, I took up my, I said, you know what, let me just take it and put it in storage. Th those were the days before, in the, you know, we could ha they had lockers in the airports. So I took my luggage and locked it up and went off to Amsterdam. When I got back to the airport, Miss Cynthia was in a state. I said, what happened? She said, Lord, me think them didn't teeth your luggage. I'm in a no effort. And she was in a state. I had to calm her down. And she was carrying on. And I, I said, so what happened? You didn't see the note I left for you? She said, yeah, me did see it. But when, long after me did get upset, me see it. <laughs> so I said, so how did you see it? She said that when she woke up and realized that my luggage was gone, she jumped up and started screaming in the middle of the airport. <laughs> and you have to know, Cynthia, when she, when she screams, she screams. And people began coming, and she said a young man came up to her and asked her what was happening. And she explained what happened. And they were going to call the police and all the rest of it. And the young man saw the paper on the ground, and he picked it up, and she read it. And she said, ah. <laughs> him did lock up the luggage and hear me, me I go crazy I kill myself but those are the kinds of things that I remember about her wonderful today you know we come and I say to celebrate her life and I'm sure you have stories to tell and I'm suggesting to you to write them so you don't forget them not only write them in your heart write them on paper for your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren, write them. This was a woman of strength, of courage. She was not afraid. And she's been through illness. And when you called me to tell me that she had finally passed, I knew we had reached a milestone. It was in June last year that I came for another funeral. And on the sidewalk after the funeral, she and I were holding court, and she said to me, I want, may just want you to make sure, so when me dead, you come. <laughs> and she, she's told me that a lot, and um, I just remember her with fun, mem with fun memories. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But that's a kind of, it's a, in one sense, it's a faith in Jesus Christ. But in another sense, it is ignorance. Because whether Jesus is present or not, and Jesus is always present, it's just that we cannot recognize Jesus sometimes, there is death. Because as human beings, we know we're not immortal. We know that, don't we? And yet, so many of us are afraid of dying. And so many of us are afraid of death. I remember as a child, if we ever walked past a cemetery at night, the head, you'd feel like your head swelling. And you want to run and can't run because your foot heavy. And you feel your heart beating fast. And I, I reflect on those days and I say, why were we afraid? Or why was I afraid of the dead? It's the living we should be afraid of. Because the dead will not do anything to you. I remember somebody telling somebody, I'm going to set dope upon you. I don't know how many people understand that. <laughs> but that's homework for those who don't understand. <clears throat> and I tell them that my divine duppy is greater than any of the duppies you have around. <laughs> because my God is so great that I do not fear anything. And in the Bible, over and over and over we hear, do not be afraid. 
Do not be afraid of tomorrow. Do not be afraid of those who speak evil against you. Do not be afraid because they said it's going to be a snowstorm. Do not be afraid because somebody doesn't like you. Do not be afraid. And yet, we live in constant fear. I hope this might not be coming across as political, but there are folks today who are selling fear in order to get votes. And we have to be careful as Christians that we do not fall into that trap. Jesus says, do not be afraid. A woman who lived her life without fear. Remember her. She's a hero. Living alone for so many years until a handsome man came by <laughs> whom she could not refuse. Do not be afraid, my brothers and sisters. Death is going to happen to you whether you like it or not. I have already done my funeral service and I sent it to my spiritual partner who is a priest who refuses to look at it by the way. He says if, when the day comes he'll look at it if he's still here. But he's not going to open that file until then. But there's a copy on my desk in my office at home. I believe that you can only begin living your true life when you make peace with death. And some of us are closer than we think. I'm standing here today, speaking with you. I don't know what's going to happen next week. Or the next week after that. Or the month after that. The only way we can be at peace with ourselves is to live right now, fully. And the only way you can live fully now is to make peace with death. I just want to end with a song that is used, at least in Jamaica, we used to use it a lot. And it captures the, the, the idea that I'm sharing with you, that death is not final. Death is not final. In another few days, we're going to be celebrating a feast called, shout it, Easter. We're going to be celebrating a feast called Easter. And I know you jumped to Easter before you went through Good Friday. And we always like to get to Easter quickly. But we have to walk through Good Friday. Good Friday captures the theme of illness. Good Friday captures the theme of loss. Good Friday captures the theme of death. But Jesus is showing us, not just telling us, but demonstrating to us that there is life after what we human beings call death. I think it's a kind of a doorway, it's a portal through which we go into another life. And I believe that at that point, we're going to meet our Savior at another level. Because I'm in, I'm in meeting him today, I'm in touch with him now. And when we're singing that song earlier about hold, my ha hold his hand, hold his... I mean, that captured the idea. You hold his hand today, but tomorrow, when we go through that portal called death, we're going to be meeting him in another way. Yes, and we're promising. Now, the song we used to sing is Sleep On, Beloved. Who remembers that? Sleep on, beloved, sleep and take your rest. Lay down your head upon the Savior's breast. I love you well, but Jesus loves you best. Good night, good night, good night. Let's see if we can sing that. Sleep on, beloved, sleep and take your rest. Lay down your head upon the Savior's breast. I love you well, but Jesus loves you best. Good night, good night, 
good night. And I say to my sister, good night. Tomorrow will come. We'll meet again. Amen.
All are invited to stand as you are able. And in the assurance of eternal life given at baptism, let us proclaim our faith and say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us join together in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. For our sister Cynthia, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Cynthia and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Give to our sister eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister Cynthia, who was reborn by water in the spirit and holy baptism. Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Now we join together in the hymn, There is a Fountain.
Amen. Amen. As we take our place here at the body, do remember what we have heard in the sermon, what we have sung in the hymns. And do remember Miss Malcolm's laugh. That laugh that could fill a room and bring you a sense of joy that you didn't know you had or needed. So make sure you laugh. Even while you're crying, make sure you laugh. Tell those stories that make you rear back and hold your stomach because it's so full of her love. And that love connected with the God of all life holds us close and keeps us near even during the difficulties that we face in this life. I wanted to say a word of thanks as we go to the con. Again, to Bishop Palate, thank you for being with us, sir. We thank you for your time and your attention, your prayerful commitment to this community and all communities. Thank you to the Brotherhood of St. Andrew as you have come to be with the family to support as we say thank you for a life well lived. So thank you all for your continued grace and help in the ministry of the church at large. And so now we continue with the commendation. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Scythia. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed breast of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And now the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do God's will, working in you that which is pleasing in God's sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be on you and remain with you both this day and even forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. As we prepare uh, to depart, uh, let me think, turn out. You want me to announce the repast? Uh, the family would like uh, to inform uh, the congregation that after uh, the burial of Ms. Malcolm's earthly remains at Pine Lawn Cemetery, there will be a repast. Uh, between the hours of 1 and 5 p.m. at J Loft Event Pet Space at 1055 East 45th Street. Again, that's on the back of our service bulletin should you uh, need that information. And uh, of course, uh, the funeral directors will direct us as we depart uh, from this place to Pine Lawn shortly.
look at this. I'm thinking about taking in all these people and hold that very, very close, very, very close. Yeah.